That was the thrilling series finale of Run For Their Life. Join us this time tomorrow for a new project from the producers of Places to Rent. Samantha Evers returns home from a tour of duty in the wars to find her neighbourhood less welcoming than when she left it. Will she find her path back to sobriety? How will she win over her neighbours in a community blaming her for the loss of Block 18? Based on a true story, Muse Carinari calls it a heart-beating, blood-moving romp. The Pretty Lady Daily says it's hard to look away. Join Samantha Evers in Evers After as she finds out you can't go home again, but maybe you can make a new one next door. Next up, WSPN introduces a new weekly show exploring relationships and how we do it. Whether you're learning to love yourself or someone else, radiationships will tickle the right spot. Join registered professor Shum DeFroyen and his co-host Brad Flink as they offer advice and solace, giving special attention for callers suffering through personal problems and interpersonal inconvenience. If the weight of your apocalypse is too much, let them apocalypse pick you up. Radiation Ships is now on WSPN. The Spoon. Travelers and trackers, vagrants and vagabonds, settlers and survivors, to all you ratheads out there in a radiation nation, this is an emergency broadcast to your heart. Further instructions incoming. We are live from our EBS compound and undisclosed location deep in the lions of the Sadlands. Our hearts are pure, our backs strong, and eyes shielded from the glare of the bone waste. I'm Rad Flink, with me, the Professor. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your radiation ship. Callers, good to be with you all again. Fresh off our 500th episode blowout, it was quite the spectacle. We blew out all the stops, really knocked the wheels off and kept it rolling. But we're rolling right on to the 501st. And ladies and gentlemen, with that out of the way, we've got something very important to talk to you about today. Ladies and gentlemen, your relationship has never been in more danger. These are dark days, ladies and gentlemen. we have never seen anything like this in the studio. And ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you, you nearly did not get this broadcast today. Isn't that right, Professor? It's still in here somewhere. I can sense your presence, Cricket. I can feel your tiny, tiny breath on the back of my neck. Go away. This Cricket nearly made recording today impossible. Now, we've, we've cordoned him off. We managed to chase him down to, I think, Professor, if you can back me up on this, I, I think he's in the ventilation near the bathrooms, the eastern bathrooms. Just as a, as a recap for our listeners, um, last week I advised one of our callers, uh, a, a young woman who was in a, an obviously toxic relationship, to sever all ties with her lover. Um, that lover, now unable to access the comforts of his enabler, emotionally distressed, and clearly a cricket, has come to me for that which he lacks. Um, of course, the same lack of basic communication skills that led to the demise of his recent relationship prevents him from expressing himself to me in an honest and transparent way. And so he chirps. Passive-aggressively. Endlessly. And this, this really displays a, a real issue with, um, with borders. You know, we, we, we've set certain borders emotionally. Mm-hmm. We've said, well, we, we won't talk about ourselves on the show, our personal lives. Don't come into it because the, the listeners, the listeners are what is important. Mm-hmm. Now, we've also set perimeters with lasers and strip mines and all sorts of uh, barbed wire and that sort of thing. Now, this cricket is completely run roughshod all over those boundaries that we set down. Mm-hmm. I think I think the inherent flaw is that an anti-personnel mine um, will not be activated by or the bite away there, of a cricket. Is there even such a thing as an anti-cricket mine? Because now I'm thinking maybe I need to go out and, and find some. I think uh, I think we can put that to the listeners. I'm, I'm sure there's an industrious and ingenious listener out there um, that that he or she, his or herself, has um, encountered a codependent cricket. And, uh, and has learned how to deal with that um, conclusively and decisively. So uh, if, if anyone out there has information uh, as to how to dispatch a codependent, um, just ludicrously needy cricket, um, give us a call. Okay, that's definitely one way. I mean, emotional, I, I suppose emotional connection to, sure, yes, metaphorically as well, speaking of... King size, queen size, and filter list. Doesn't it feel like something's missing? That's a short list. That's right. Just when you thought it was all over your head, 
Kitterettes. You heard of these, Professor? They're amazing. Love them. Kitterettes are the child-sized smoke that's smooth and lasts. These are rolled and machined by genuine kit fingers. 100% certified kit fingers. These are certified with a gold seal of approval from numerous advisory boards. They are rolled and machined by genuine kit fingers to ensure 100% size accuracy. They're perfect for a quick break or a late night rendezvous. Made for kids by kids. For a uniquely smooth taste. Um, there's no substitute for children's fingers. All right. Well, hopefully that cricket keeps his distance. I think we made our presence known, our expectations known to that cricket. So let's go ahead and, and try to take a caller here. We'll take it down a notch, see if we can you know, get, get things back under control. Who do we have on the, on, the, on the lines there? We'll be right back with Rad Flink and Professor Sean DeFryan on Radiation Ships. Hey, you! Yeah, you! Yeah, you! Hey, you! Do you wonder if life is going anywhere? Are you just pillaging from town to town, just sloppily taking what you want, but you don't even know what you want? Apply to Death Punk School for Raiders. We have over 50 trained, brutal, vicious, and punctual assassins on staff. We will turn you from punk to hunk. These days, when everyone is clawing for a piece of pie, we will teach you how to cleanly, efficiently, and deftly kill everyone around the pie. Deft Punk School for Raiders. Harder, better, faster, deadlier. We now return to Radiation Ships, already in progress, on WSPN. The Spoon. In its entirety, which is why the word cuckold sounds so much like the word chuckled. That's fascinating, Professor. Mm -hmm, Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, I've always thought so. Okay, let's take another call. Welcome to Radiation Ships. How can we service you? Uh, am I, uh, am I on? Am I through? I, I can hear you. Oh, that's, that's fantastic. No, uh, no, I, I love you guys' show. I love it. I haven't, I haven't actually, uh, heard it for a while. We can't, we can't get it down here in the, uh, southern sadlands. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, caller. We really appreciate that. You know, this show is made, it's for the listeners. Mm-hmm. We do this for the listeners. And, mm-hmm. and you and people like you are the reason that we do this every day. So uh, you, you guys are still doing the thing where uh, uh, I talk about stuff and uh, then you you tell me how to not not do it the bad way. This is radiation ships. Uh, you, personal growth, relationship growth. We offer advice that you need. Okay, I, I used to I used to be out out there in the sadlands, you know, you know, busting chops, uh, working for the raiders, uh, you know. But uh, you know, people start talking, and people start you know getting married and getting older and doing the thing. So I I was like, okay, maybe that's for me, right? So I I, I get I get me a wife. I, I settle down. We get ourselves a nice bunker. It's you know, and we've got to go a view of the poison sea from there. Uh, we have three kids, and uh, only one of them's a mutant, and everything's good. And uh, then she dies, and uh, okay, let me just let me just slow you down there for a second. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we don't need your life story. We just need to know what's wrong. What am I supposed to do now, right? Dead wife, three kids, one room, shitty bunker, got cans. That's it. Well, to know where you're going, um, I suppose we need to know a little more of where you've been. Um, you said you worked with the Raiders. Um, what are your skills? What are your interests? What do you, in which, which areas do you excel? I was a lumper. The, the argument happens, right, between, like, Raider groups. Mm-hmm. And uh, you're yelling at them, and then they're yelling at you. And you need the guy to come up behind them and lump them. Mm-hmm. So that's, uh, that was mostly my, my thing. I'm really good at hitting somebody in the back of the head when they're not looking. I'm really good at quiet. You're, you're very quiet. You're, you're very violent. Um, tell me, do, do you have experience with crickets? I can absolutely 100% kill a cricket. It, it's, it's not a problem. We, we can't find him. That's the issue. Well, 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 how many other crickets do you have? It's just the one. That's, that's the thing. Just oh, the okay. one. I so, mean, we, we're, we're talking about, what, miles of highways? Or uh, hallways, excuse me, not highways. You say miles of hallways? Yeah. I mean, we, got, we, we got a bunker. But this, this cricket got, is completely I got, I got inconsiderate. Too. Hey, hey, back me up, Professor. This mm-hmm. cricket, he hasn't listened to a thing we said. He, he doesn't. If we're in the massage parlor, he's in the massage parlor. Um, we have a massage parlor? We, we've got a bunker when the hot water went. That might have been mm-hmm. him. Yeah. Do you yeah. have hot water? Yeah. Well, not not anymore. It's, well, I, it's lukewarm at best. Since this cricket it's, got it's, here. it's tepid. You think you have problems? The, the only, Try taking a tepid shower three times a day. The only hot water we have pushing through these systems is when somebody's freshly peed. I'm sitting here wondering if I've wasted my life, and you guys are sitting there talking about hot water. You're clearly familiar with the old adage: hurt people, hurt people. 
you're experiencing a very similar phenomenon. Um, boring people are boring. Uh, now, whereas some of my patients in the past have exhibited signs of multiple personalities, each displaying their own interests, skills, individuality, you seem to possess none of these things. Uh, you are experiencing what I call inadequate personality disorder. Inadequate personality disorder? Yeah. So you're saying I'm in the adequate mm. for my personality? Unfortunately, no. Uh, I mean, it's possible. Um, I've only known you a few minutes. Um, I, I am quite sleepy. Uh, it's possible you have a borderline personality, um, which of course means you almost have a personality. But, but not quite. Um, I think your problems would be best served by just being more interesting. Have you tried that caller? Have you tried being more interesting? Well, and, and I would I would posit the question, um, were people losing consciousness because of your violent outbursts or were people losing consciousness because of your your dearth of interest? Wow, that's a really good that's a really good point, Professor. Maybe he's not quite as good a lumper as he purports. Listen, I was, I was, I, I was part of the Frontiersmen, man. They are the most badass raiders out there. Look, let me remind you, this cricket has had us up all night. You're gonna have to spice things up a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, um, Professor usually doesn't get like this, but he's mm -hmm. just, he's just nodding off le left and right. So let's let's get back to uh, your, I guess, problems, so we can go ahead and just knock this out and get on to the next caller. Mm -hmm. um, your problem is, you're bored. Yeah. Okay. What's the purpose in life? I mean, that's that's what you guys do, right? You, you give you give purpose and help. I'm just trying to figure out my purpose, like, because all I do is, is is sit around with these kids. Like, I got, I got three of these bastards, and they they just sit here and what? What do they want? More food? More food? More food? Lima bean me? Lima bean me? I ain't lumping nobody in the back of the head. I ain't lumping my wife in the back of the head. I mean, shit. When we put her out the disposal. That, that was it. There was no proper funeral, nothing pretty. It's just all fucking boring pizzazz. How, how is this? Is, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Right. When they when they get born into the world, you, you feel the meaning of life, the glory of, of new life. But I mean, shit, I've got the same thing just like hitting somebody in the back of the head. Same feeling. OK, it sounds to me um, that what you are in need of is is some reframing in your life. OK, now you say you have a bunker. What it sounds to me like you have is a schoolroom. You say that you were a lumper. What it sounds like to me is you are now a lumping instructor. And, and let me tell you what I mean by that. You, you say you have three children. Yeah. Now, in the days before the confluence, um, children receive their vocation by way of apprenticeship. Um, perhaps you can find renewed joy in life by training your children uh, in the mutilatory arts like their father. I like this. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Now, now, of course, the, the, the ancient apprenticeship model only allows for two children to be trained, so there will need to be some minor culling of your children. Um, now, perhaps you could deprive them of food for several days and then introduce a piece of fruit and several knives. Um, perhaps you could construct a rudimentary thunderdome in your bunker. It's not my place to tell you how best to cull your offspring. Every child is different. So, so the the culling process. How do you make sure that the right one gets called? Well, I think we can help you out there. Um, which one have you chosen for the caller? Okay, and, and get, get a name and a general description. Uh, yeah, his name is um, Carthy. Carthy. And uh, he's got uh, three eyes on the right, and then okay. just the one on the left. Okay. And you said you were out by the Poison Sea in the South Sadlands, correct? Yeah. Good deal. Well, let's, you said you were a fan, a longtime fan. Yeah, yeah. So let's see if we can't um, bring back an old classic. Oh, oh, you, Professor? Did you hear that? I did indeed. Oh, he's doing the thing. Not the cricket. Oh yeah. He's doing the thing. Hope you brought your shades. It's about to get real bright in here. Better get to the shelter. It's time for another nuclear call out. Ladies and gentlemen, who's the spotlight on today? Looks like Carthy down by the Poison Sea. This is your chance, ladies and gentlemen, your chance to win fabulous prizes and rewards. All you gotta do is find that boy, find that girl, find Carthy, and let us know. Use the Dropbox down by I-65. There's a statue, two huge pillars, legs, big old head laying right next to it. There's Dropbox at the bottom. You drop proof off there, and you will win a wonderful prize. Ladies and gentlemen, that's been our nuclear call-out. Caller, thank you for calling. Thanks for uh, helping with the call-in. No problem. Just drop them out to shoot whenever you're ready. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you. It's always nice to be able to help people.
it's you know it's 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 mostly on us, but it's also on them. They have to be willing. You have to you have to make sacrifices in your life if you want to move forward. You know, we all carry a lot of dead weight, whether that's emotional or psionical. That's very true. Mm-hmm. And maybe maybe that's something we should we should be thinking about with this this cricket. You know, as I'm thinking about it, last caller made a good point. The bunker's pretty big. Mm-hmm. Do we really need that wing? Yes. Yeah, I do. I mean, when we talk about this off air, like I said, we don't like it in our personal problems. My lumbar is excessively tender. That's where the massage Involved in the right. show. So um, I, I guess we should probably uh, go to another caller. We, 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 we got anybody else on the line I'm here. I'm going to be very cranky without my massage. Go ahead, caller. You're listening to Radiation Ships, a massage for your love muscle. But first, buy this stuff. Primordial Stew. We've filled this stew to the rim with unique mouth-watering flavors from all walks of life. Starting with a homemade nucleic acid purine base, adenine is formed by heating a familiar aqueous ammonium cyanide solution. Patent-pending freeze-thaw cycles are used under a reductive atmosphere with spark discharges at the primary energy source. Primordial has always been committed to using only purposeful ingredients that our customers know and trust. Chunky S triazines, hearty nucleobases, Primadenines, including cytosine and uracil, and a creamy urea solution. Primordial stew. It's got less fat and lard in it than if we had put more fat or lard in it. Available at your local trader or free on dump site. These socks are the bomb. They're literally a bomb. <laughs> Not kidding here, guys. Sometimes I wish I was just kidding. But I guess that's not a real option here. Do some charity. You guys ever have socks and are like, whoa, I need an explosion. Bomb ass socks. They can explode if you're not careful. Why are they like that? I didn't make them. I'm just telling you about them. How am I supposed to know that? I just do commercials all day, every day. Like, geez, oh, you think this guy's scientist, whoever makes these anyways, they have time to film their own commercials? They gotta fill all these orders of bomb ass socks. We sell bomb ass socks. We're giving the explosion to the needy. It's like charity. Don't put them on your hands, stupid. They're socks. <laughs> Don't put them on your feet, neither, because they're still bombs. Okay, who needs an explosion? Are you needy? Bomb-ass socks. Bomb-ass socks. Bomb-ass socks. They'll make you look bomb-ass. That's why we call them bomb-ass socks. Not because they explode, but because they also do explode. Bomb-ass socks. I'm needy. We are back with Radiation Ships and WSPN. The Spoon. Just an everyday case of adult onset razor jowls. I think we have time for one more call. Go ahead, caller. Welcome to Radiation Ships. How can we service you? Well, um, I just, I just wanted to uh, call it. My, my name is uh, Rutch, um, Rutch Menton, as a matter of fact. And I, I just wanted to call in uh, in response to the last caller that you had. It seems like he's having a pretty tough go at things. And I just wanted to say that I, I, I completely agree with what you guys are saying. And I feel like he's got some control in his life because I've definitely found some control in mine. And I just wanted to make sure that for anybody else out there that... Yeah, I mean, you know, things here in the Sadlands can get to you, but it doesn't have to be what drives you on an everyday level. You, you, you yourself, everybody that's out there listening, they can take control of their lives kind of the way that I have. So, Absolutely. And let me tell you, Color, I, this, this is like a breath of fresh air. I'm sure you've heard that today's been a little rough for us. Um, but at the same time, like, we know it's going to get better. It's not that bad. Right, and, and so often we have these callers calling in. And of course, I'm not talking about you here, caller, or you, dear listeners, just the callers. Just the callers that call in and they bellyache. And we're here to hear your problems. We're here to offer you solutions. But when you don't listen, when you tell us, I'm not willing to call that kid, when you tell us, you know, I'm not willing to separate entirely from everyone I know and move because I'm unhappy. If that's, the, if that's the advice you've been given, well, maybe you should listen. You called to listen, not not to tell us what's wrong, right? You didn't call us to lecture us on, oh, you're living in a bunker and you have it so much better and you don't understand. No, we do understand. We have a device show. We are, it's our business to understand. That's what we do. I, sorry, I, sorry, sorry, uh, caller. I got a, got a little carried away there. Why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? Because well, it sounds like you could be a real positive influence on our callers. Well, I mean, I, I just wanted to touch base on, on a little bit about what you were saying. I mean, because I completely, totally agree. After my second amputation, I thought that my life was done. I thought it was over. And then I said, you know, hey, this can be 
actually the tipping point to something good, to something great. Well, I live here in the North Side Lands, and I've been kind of an intermediary between different groups, uh, bringing them together and helping solve people's problems all through my region here in the North. And so I, I, I've, I've kind of become somewhat of a beacon, if you want to call it that. I just and, and it just is just kind of a complete and total happenstance. I, I just uh, there's been some greater groups. People have kind of got to know me. Um, I kind of lose touch with people, though, really quickly. Uh, I mean, just, you know, through different circumstances, I, I, but I, I will meet people, I will, I'm into changing people's lives, and, and then we usually don't talk very much after that, because I feel like my work has been done, you know what I'm saying? I mean, after I make sure that their dog is dead, or uh, after I make sure that their complete domicile has been destroyed, I can leave that situation knowing that I've left them in a better place. So I feel the same way about my own life. Sounds like we're coming from a, from a very similar place of wanting to help people, and just sometimes you just get so fed up. Am I right? You just, Professor, back me up on that. It's so frustrating to have these people calling in, and they won't take control of your li their lives like this caller has. Yeah, some some people are just just terminally ungrateful. You know, when 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 you, as an enlightened person, have identified uh, the problem or person or or pet um, that is the source of their issue, and you um, you tell them they need to remove it, or or you take the initiative, um, like like you have Rutch, and you remove it for them. Um, sometimes they, the, the response is just infantile, you know, and it doesn't, it doesn't make your work any less important. It doesn't make you any less enlightened. It just, it just shows other people to be inadequate. Yeah. So Raj, can you give us an example of just uh, help, help our listeners out here? What sort of thing would you do? Maybe just, just the last job you did that you're really proud of. I'm all about clearing a path. You know, a path that is uncluttered and a path sure. that is a straight and narrow way to the best you that you could possibly be. You know, and that's so what I like to hear. That's just what I do. I mean, and it's my gift that I can give to other people. Actually, there was one group of raiders, um, and they were having some trouble uh, deciding as to as to who should lead, who should who should follow, how to work things out. And I could see that they were having a structure problem. They were having a log jam at the top, all right? So what I did was I made sure they brought their problems, and I just overheard, you know? I mean, that's the kind of guy that I am. I really want people to be able to find their best version of clarity. So I came across an argument, and I made sure, I made sure that one of my slash harpoons was nice and fresh, and I got two in one stroke. I got two in one stroke. And That's so amazing. This, this trio wow. of raiders, this trio of raiders, there was no more confusion because there was only one left. Sure. There was no. only one left, and there was no, no more confusion, no more doubt. And when I left that situation, that gentleman, that gentleman had no doubt as to who was running his organization because it was him. Because it was him, and all of the control, all of the responsibility was in his hands. He didn't thank me, but I know he wanted to. Mm -hmm. He didn't thank me, I know he wanted to. And I just made sure um, I had to hastily get out so I could go about helping other people. Uh, and just the, 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 the shouts of gratitude as I was leaving the situation, I could tell were very heartfelt. And if he's listening right now, I would just like to say, hey, brother, that's the best I could do for another person, and I hope you pass it on. You know, uh, you, you don't have to apologize to him. I tell you, I tell you you're welcome, right? Yeah, you're yeah. welcome. Now, were those the, the Movados up by uh, Grub Road? You said you were north, north uh, Sadlands, correct? Uh, the, uh, slightly over the distorted gorge. Sure. The best way I tell people to find it, if you can look for the elongated craters with the deformed slugs, that's, that's oh, yeah. around in that yeah. area. Yeah. That's yeah. around yeah. that area. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, exactly what you're yeah. talking about. I have to I have to commend you on your your excellent mastery of uh, advanced psychological problem solving. Uh, as a as a fellow enlightened person, as a fellow pro, uh, solver of problems. Um, I, I often find it difficult to, to just find the energy, to find the, the drive, the motivation to push forward. Where do you find your, your drive? What fuels you? Well, I, I get up every day. The radiation in my domicile was so unbearable that I, uh, I said, I don't need this. 
I don't need this space that's so cramped and is so uh, riddled odor and pungence. And so what I did was I just made sure I, I did without it. I put my incinerator on high and just let it go and went a mile away. And so now I let nature, and that's right, I said nature, I let nature speak to me. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I let the crow canaries, them tell me what I should be doing. I let the buzzard bears tell me what I should be doing. That is exactly what I need. So I'm in tune with nature and it gives me my motivation. If a buzzard bear is picking at my open scabs on my torso, that lets me know, hey, it's time to go change somebody's life. It's time to go change somebody's life, and that's that's it what is. I do. That's it, how it's, I do. It's always time to change somebody's life. And uh, let, me, let me say something there, because I feel like we're, we're a, a real kindred spirit. We're really making a connection here. I feel like you're you're like the grunt. You're like, like the boots on the ground doing the real tough work. I, we're sitting up here like armchair generals, but you, you, sir, are doing the real, the to pot's work. I am a soldier. Absolutely. Let, I, me, let me tell you something real, real, real quick, because you were mentioning about just sort of where you get that that drive, where you get that fire, right? And I, I try to keep personal stuff off the show, of course. We've talked about that. But um, just sort of something, a little ritual that I do every morning it, that, that just, it sets me off and it gets me going and it puts me in the right place. So ladies and gentlemen, what you want to do, you want to go out to the place with the skulls. You know the one. And for me, that happens to be just down, just down the hill. Get a good, intact human skull. Now, I set that on my bedside table. Every morning I get up, and I hold that skull in my hands, and I look deep in those empty cavernous sockets, and I say, GDU, mm-hmm. I'm alive, mm-hmm. and you're not. Mm-hmm. Darn you, yeah. Mr. Fricker. Mm-hmm. And that really, that, that just puts me in the right place. And so, so I, I give that to you as a gift. Because it's a really, I think the professor calls it an affirmation. Yeah, I've, I've, I've actually, I've witnessed this. I've witnessed Brad, Brad performing this. I've walked into his room and I've seen him laying in bed. I mean, he's not holding it to his face, but he's got, he's got the skull um, kind of at his, at his midsection. And he's, he's screaming and he's grunting. Um, and that, that skull in his lap is shaking. Um, and, and, and when he's done, he's lighter, he's, he's happier, he's, ah. he's expelled whatever it was that was in him. Um, I, I guess metaphorically yeah. into the socket of that skull, wow. and 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 it's great. And so I, I hope our listeners are, are are taking note of these things. You know, it, just, it lights that fire. You know, that fire that you have to have to get up and just go every morning. So what I'm hearing is that I need a vessel. I need a vessel to pour out. And and this is because I haven't had any bad episodes uh, since that last time I slaughtered that family of four. Mm-hmm. But that, I mean, I've been living hey, on that hey, high. Hey, hey, I've been living don't, on. Beat yourself up, man. Sometimes advice goes wrong. Well, no, I've been living on that high for, I mean, because I can see that their problem really, I mean, you know, hell hell is other people. I released them from that, and they're in a better place. Uh, Not as good of a place as I'm in, but you still, you know, you get what I'm saying. You gotta think outside the box. This is this is what I gotta do for those times where it gets slow, and uh, because I crave interaction. You know what I'm saying? But out here, sometimes in the Sadlands, especially with no domicile, it can get a little lonely. So, yeah, I, 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 I would love to try something like that. Just kind of putting that negative energy, what little I might ever come across, into another vessel. Um, exactly. You got you, you got to the heart of it. That's exactly what it is. Does the same thing apply to decapitated corpses? Because, I mean, I might need a larger vessel to put what I need in. So, I mean, if I say, like, if I had a decapitated corpse and I'm, like, yelling into the neck, I mean, and all of the body is taken, how, how does that work? Well, I can't speak from experience there, but I'd imagine it's pretty much the same. It's it, it's not about what the vessel is. It's about what the vessel is to you. Mm-hmm. Great. Yeah. Great. Great. It's also important to remember that um, sometimes our advice um, on, on this show is, is, is a 180. You need to change everything that you do. Um, but for you, Rutch, I would say um, this is just an augmentation. You know, for you, for you to progress to the next level in your life, uh, get a vessel, 
Yeah. You know, uh, um, project, project your, your, your innermost parts into the vessel, uh-huh. but, but at the same time, keep doing what you're doing, you know, right. um, t- talk to the animals, walk with the animals, do what the animals do, yeah. um, and burn things. Great. Anytime I can help anybody and anytime I can get help, I feel like the world is, uh, it, it's, it's a beautiful day outside even guys. I mean, I'm out here now in it and I wish, I wish you guys in your subterranean bunker could see what I see. Oh, what? I'm coming up on a place. Uh, are these movies? I, I used to be a big film fan. Uh, I, this is a, I think a deserted blockbuster. I, Oh. Yeah, I, it's gonna. I'm gonna take some time. I'm gonna need to take some time here and suss through what's here. But uh, uh, I'll definitely call in again. Thank uh, you so uh, much, guys. Excellent. And 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 do me a favor as uh, in, in the next part of your journey as you're you're exploring the aisles of that place, um, keep an eye open for a film called Condor Man, um, early '80s Disney production. Michael Crawford at his best. Uh, if you find that, uh, give us a call back and uh, we'll we'll maybe discuss a meeting. Tell, we'll, t- tell you what color call back anyway. Uh, well, well, I think we can talk about this off air, but I, 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 I'd like to see that as well. Mm-hmm. We'll do. Keep walking to the light, guys. Keep you walking too. to the light. You, you too. too. You stay strong. All right. Mm-hmm. I'm so glad. I'm so glad he called today. You know, for the for the affirmation, for the opportunity to help him along in his quest, and for just just a chance to maybe see Condor Man again. Absolutely, absolutely, it gives you hope. And that, that's really what—that's really what the affirmation is all about. That's really what, what any of this is all about. It's, it's the hope that we can help people. It's the hope that—it's the hope that that cricket doesn't have a very long lifespan, or will give himself away shortly mm-hmm. after we're all fair. I'm wondering if, if the self maintenance routines would help clear that out. We should—we uh, should give that a shot. Do, do you have a—do you have a spare skull? Oh, um, then we can go get one. Okay. Quick enough. I, I toss them out. Let's, okay, let's, let, let's do that. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that's all the time we have today. We got some business to take care of. This has been uh, Radiation Ships. I'm Red Flink. With me, as always, the professor. That's me. Don't come looking for us. 